back to Block TV. It's time now for Chain Breakers. And as the utterly devastating Hurricane Dorian continues to bear down on the Atlantic, cutting a swath of utter destruction, those in its path are in dire need of assistance from around the globe. And you can see there the images of the destruction being caused throughout the Bahamas, primarily on the islands of Grand Bahama and Abaco, the two biggest islands there in the Bahamas. And the cryptosphere already has a representative prepared to help take up the cause. We're speaking about PO8 and Scullies, who are leading the Bahamas blockchain Hurricane Dorian Relief Fund. And I speak now with Matt Arnett, CEO of PR, PO8. Matt, thanks so much for speaking with us. Thanks for having me. Okay, so just to uh, sort of start things off here, before we get into uh, the relief fund and the work they're doing there, can you speak to us a little bit about some of the devastation you've seen, heard of, and what's happening in the, in the Bahamas with Hurricane Dorian? So this has been unprecedented for us. We have never seen anything like it, although the Bahamas has always been prepared for hurricanes. Um, this is the second biggest hurricane, uh, the worst impacted hurricane in the Atlantic Ocean with, you know, mild winds at miles an hour of over 180 miles an hour and gusts of over 220 miles an hour. And the way that this hurricane sat on top of Grand Bahama, which is our tech capital, um, it, it basically did not move. And that is the first time in history that anything like that has ever happened. And so that has caused a storm surge. So imagine 15, 20 feet of waves coming in. So places that would normally have no water, even as far inland as the middle of the island, is completely flooded. So you have people right now, as I speak, that are stuck there and they can't be rescued because the conditions are still not uh, in, in place for them to go out. There's still so much winds, about 120 mile hour winds now, which is still a uh, category three storm. So you have people who've been stuck in ceilings for maybe 10 hours by now. Um, and it's very dangerous situation. So, and we could, we could not have anticipated for this. A lot of people that are in low lying areas would have been evacuated. Some people might not have, have left. And then some people were caught by surprise because it, it just never happens this way. So for us, uh, the, the biggest thing right now is about getting relief first to the, the island of Abaco where we have, for example, uh, the Coast Guard has come in to help. We have our national emergency agencies. There's so many people on the ground that are just taking the task up right now because that's how we are as a nation. We come together very fast. We rebuild and we push forward. But all of this, when I think about the kids, when I think about the old people, when I think about the time that they're not going to be able to go back to school, when I think about the social, uh, whether it's, 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 it's the, the psychological trauma of all of this. I mean, there's so many videos of, of roofs being blown off. And we just, you know, with a Category 5 hurricane, you just can't anticipate this happening. So immediately we want to get people the basic necessities that they need. You know, that, that's shelter, food, water. Um, and so with all of the funds that are going to be raised from the blockchain community and, and the reason why we're, we're, we're very adamant on, hey, let's, let's really support this idea is because from my, my, from my perspective, um, as a Bahamian, I've been out uh, for the last two years really pushing the Bahamas brand as a destination, as a jurisdiction for uh, blockchain technology. Like this is where you should come. This is where you should register your companies. And all of those things are still still valid and will still happen and are, and are happening right now. But at the same time, there are a lot of people that have that have met myself, that have met other people in the Bahamas, that know about PO8, that know about all of our great companies that we have in the Bahamas, and they want to support us. They've been writing us, how can we get involved? So we've set up um, uh, three, two wallet addresses, one for a BTC, one for Ether, and a GoFundMe page. Um, and we would have loved to keep this all on blockchain so it could be 100% transparent down to having payments, you know, offline so we could really track everything. But of course, you know, in times like this where there's maybe not any electricity and any any internet here and there and all these things, what we're going to do to make sure that it's fully transparent is we have uh, Don Cornish, who is the island administrator for Grand Bahama for Freeport. Um, he will be making sure that all of this money that's raised, and he's been a, a good advocate for blockchain. He's, he's, uh, he's been out at consensus, as you know, he's been 
at other uh, events speaking, speaking passionately about the need for adoption, the need for, for us to have integration and so on. And so there are projects that we want to see done. For example, those projects could go from repairs, rebuilding projects, whether they're getting simple as water, whether they're providing uh, other help for people who need shelter now. All of these things are projects that we want to see start and finish. We want to make sure that the money gets to the people. And this is a big, big concern mm -hmm. for me because a lot of times in these efforts, money never reached the hands of people. And so this is why POA took up the task to do it themselves, to really push forward and lead the effort so that we could be accountable up until the very end. Mm. Now, as well, just before we, we move on, obviously, uh, we want to explain to the audiences where you're standing right now. Obviously, they're seeing blue skies. That's not to say that the Bahamas is clear of this situation right now. Could you just explain to our audience a little not bit about where all. you are and not at what, all. in relation yes. to the hurricane itself? Yes. So the Bahamas, the Bahamas is very large. I, I, I would love for people to just go out and, and Google a second the map of the Bahamas and you'll see where Abaco is and you will see where Grand Bahamas. is. So there are furthest most northern islands in the north northwest and uh what's happened is the hurricane cut across um abaco marsh harbor that area and then just sat between uh, abaco and over parts of um, grand bahama and that's that's quite far away from the capital nassau um so what would normally be a clear beautiful day for the people that are in Grand Bahama right now, they're still going through an additional probably 10 hours more of very high winds, like I said, maybe 120 miles, 110 mile an hour winds. And remember that that water, that surge water, the ocean has not let up. So it's continually, continually coming in, coming in more and more. Mm -hmm. And so it makes it very difficult to rescue people. It makes it very hard. And so that is why it's, it's very necessary that we get uh, the help and the resources that we need from, from anybody that can help us, from anybody that wants to get involved, from anybody that wants to be a part of the effort. It is absolutely important. We are 110% uh, dedicated to this mission. Um, and there are many companies, we have a page uh, where people can see who is involved. And if there's anyone that wants to get involved, they can simply send us their logos and we'll add them to the help page and they and they can be doing anything. Even if you send it out on your social media, if you talk directly to your community, all of these things are important at this time because the world needs to know what's happening. We need to keep the spotlight on and, and we would love to get uh, donations of any form from anyone um, mm -hmm. so that we could ensure that a state of normalcy is, is given back to the people of Grand Bahama mm -hmm. and the people of Abaco and because there's still a great future for us as we rebuild for Grand Bahama to become the tech hub of, of the entire Caribbean. I, I, I want to ask as well, I mean, you know, the, the Caribbean has been devastated in the last several years in various parts by a number of major hurricanes, whether we talk in 2017, we had the, the jewel hit, we had, uh, you know, both Harvey and Maria strike uh, Puerto Rico and Texas respectively. Uh, now in 2019, we're seeing a, another massive hurricane. And as you pointed out, there's this issue of getting aid to where it needs to be in the right places and keeping account and track of all those things. Can you speak mm -hmm. a little to the fact, uh, the advantages of blockchain technology in keeping accountable, making sure everyone has a clear, you know, uh, uh, understanding of what's happening with the money and where it's going? Could you speak to that point a little bit, please? So I think what we see here, because infrastructure hasn't seeped into our everyday lives and everyone doesn't have a wallet and other organizations, whether nonprofits, uh, they don't have wallets for us to send, for example, let's say some stable token or Bitcoin to them so that then we could say, okay, we've sent uh, $1,000 to this one. We've sent $10,000, we sent $100,000. And then we could go and track their purchases and say, okay, now they, they spent that uh, crypto um, to get these water, to get these packages of water, of groceries, of everyday items, and then we could really have a full report. So now what we have to do, but, but that's the vision of the future, and that is, that is what is possible with blockchain, right? So that we can, we can seal up some of the cracks that all of this aid money falls, falls through around the world. So for us, what we're doing is, uh, initially everybody will be able to track and see how much ether is coming. How much bitcoin has come in and we will be accountable for every ether and every bitcoin that comes in and what we've done additionally we said we want to match a poa as a company we've already said that we we have uh 
to set aside 1 billion POA tokens. So that means that if you give $10, we will give $10. You give 20, we will give 20. You give 100, we will give 100. So that is to show our solidarity in this situation. And now there, there have to be offline components and there have to be people, they have to be external champions. And one of our external champions, as I mentioned, is Don Cornish, who is uh, not just a part of the government and knows exactly where things need to be, but he is a member of the blockchain community. Um, and, and that is what's important. That's important because now we have this mix, right? We have the analog and the digital coming together. And so once that money goes to use, once, once we see what is done, then we do whether they are blog reports, video reports that come after and say, here's where your ether went, here's where your Bitcoin went. But I don't like when there are situations where there are these black hole, kind of black hole, rabbit hole, uh, aid organizations, and you never know what happens with the money. They say what they do, but there's no accountability. At least for this effort, there will be there'll be accountability 100% because we have an external champion who, who have a team who has a team around him of people who understand where are the real pain points. And this is where blockchain technology has been very transformative. And then we hope that in the future, this is this is just clear cases of need of blockchain technology because if we if we had already moved, let's say we were two years uh in the into the future all of those people and organizations and places where you could buy water from and, and goods from would have all had wallets and we could have just been transferring money around and it would have been completely 100 percent seamless and frictionless but because we're not there yet we have to we have to have a mix we have to have sort of this matrix of things that make this 100 percent transparent all right certainly a, a noble goal and amazing to see you guys getting on the case so quickly so early even as the hurricane is still raging, making the case to really use this technology to help people on the ground. I want to thank you, Matt Arnett, CEO of POA, for taking on this project and for coming to speak with us at Block TV today. I wish you the best of success in this project and a speedy recovery for all those in the Bahamas. Last word. And before we that? leave, mm -hmm. yes, before we leave, I just want people to know that they can go to www.poa.io uh, uh, slash uh, Dorian Relief. And there, well, I guess we'll also post a link in the show notes um but they can find us on they hit the website directly on the main page there is a big banner that comes up so immediately people can go there and and donate immediately you can also share it with your community um and i like to think that it, we have to be our neighbor's keeper we have to be our brother's keeper because we don't know when it when any type of tragedy would fall on us so for right now it's our day in, in the bahamas but um, it could be anyone else's and we will be there to help the next person. Certainly. Uh, important words to put out there. Matt Arnett, CEO of PO8. Again, I want to thank you so much for coming on Block TV and stay with us at blocktv.com for all the latest in news and information. I'm Asher Westrop Evans. Thanks for watching. For more news and updates, follow us on Twitter.